Here is the solution to the engrams challenge. Let's recap. What are engrams? Well, we had unigrams, we had biograms, we have trigrams, and foregram. So a unigram is one in a row, biogram two in a row, trigram three in a row, foregram four in a row. So we can use that for example with words. Here is a very short sentence. The unigrams are just the words. Here is a very short end sentence. The bigrams are two words together. So we have here is is a a very very short and short sentence the trigrams there are four here is a is a very a very short and very short sentence finally the foregram is four words in a row here is a very is a very short and a very short sentence so those are engrams and the challenge was to find the unigrams, biograms, trigrams and foregrams between two sentences. So in a six word sentence we can see how many grams there are. We're only going up to four grams but you can have five grams, six grams and continue as many as you like. So remember your challenge, calculate the engrams, unigrams, biograms, trigrams and foregrams. So to start off, we're well, going to use this example. Here we have a list of numbers called my list. If we compare each number with the number that's two ahead, we get the following. So you can see the list here. So we start off 10, and 10 is the number two in front of the first one. If we move to the second one, we've got 20 and 80, then 10 and 20, then 80 and 10, and then 20 and 10. So you can see these pairs. Now, if we carry on, the second last element, 10, if we compare that with what's two in front, what we will do is we'll get an out of range error message inside a loop because we've run out of the list. We're out of range. So we can deal with this by stopping early. We know we're gonna look two ahead so therefore we can stop at the end minus two. So if we look at this for loop, what we are doing is we're comparing my list with the element that's in position i and my list, the element that's position i plus two. So 10 and 10, 20, 80, 10, 20, 80, 10, and 20, 20. Now if we're gonna do that in a for loop, we can use a range from the length of the list but remember, minus 2, so we don't get an out-of-range error. And then if we printed that, that will print the elements that we've said before. The reason why we've shown this is to make sure you understand that the for loop can't go to the end. So with a trigram, it was minus 2. But with a bigram, it's going to be the end minus 1. And a foregram, it's going to be the end minus 3. So we're going to stop in the position before we get an out of range error message for the engrams. So let's have a look at them. We're going to compare two sentences. So here we have a sentence. Here is a sentence about 10 words in total. We split the sentence into a list called words one and we use a range from length of words and if we print where we are in the range and the word we get a list from 0 to 9 with all the words is the 10 word sentence so here we have our two sentences here is a sentence about 10 words in total and another sentence of about 10 words but it is different we can split the words into two lists and we can use those lists in two for loops. We have a nested for loop. And if we print the words from the first list and then the second list, we will have a comparison of unigrams. 
we want words that are the same in both sentences, we can use an if statement to check each word to see if it's the same from the second sentence as the first. And in this example, we're just going to print that. So here we have is sentence of about 10 words. So those are the common words between the two sentences. They are the unigrams. Now the bigrams, two in a row, two consecutive words, we can do exactly the same and check the following word. So we're going to check if two words are the same and the following word and print them. The only alteration, the only change in the code, as well as checking two words, is the first for loop, we've got the length of words minus one. So we don't get that out of range error message. We can look at these sentences and we can check the bigrams of sentence of, of about, about 10 and 10 words. So that's correct. That's the answer that we was looking for. That's the correct code. Now the trigrams, instead of looking for one word or two words, we're looking for three consecutive words, three in a row. So we have an if statement and the second part of the if statement, we can use and, and the third if statement to check three words. Again, in the first for loop, instead of going to the end, we're here we're going to the end minus two, and then we're going to print the trigrams. We check them, sentence of about, of about ten, about ten words. So the trigrams, that's correct. Finally, we looked at four grams. So we have the statements. So we have four here, and we're going to print the four grams. Remember the for loop. We don't want to go to the end, so we have minus three. And we have the two sentences. And here we have two four grams, sentence of about 10 and of about 10 words. Now you might get some n-grams that are duplicate. So for example, we have the bigram, we have two words together. Now that might occur more than once, especially if the texts are quite long. So is that, is that good or bad? Do we want that to happen or not? Well, that's a good question. So you need to look at that in your code. If you have two texts and you're trying to see if they are similar and you're measuring similarity, you might include the engrams even though they're duplicates because it shows that the two texts are similar. So you could say duplicates are good and you want to keep them. Now in translation, if you have more than one occurrence, it means that the first one is probably a correct translation, but the other multiple engrams are bad. It means there's a translation that's not correct. So if you have multiple occurrences, then the duplication is not what you want. So that's bad. So we don't want that. So it depends. If you want duplications to show similarity, you would keep them. Whereas in translation, you don't want to show duplications. So you would delete an engram when you're counting them. So it only occurs once, not more than once. So in translation, you don't want duplicates. So there is a method. We're going to call this the Wheezy solution after the author of the code who came up with this solution we use a free value tuple and you compare them and if you get a match you can delete the match and there's no duplicates okay if you like this video please click like and if you haven't already please subscribe thank you for watching and hopefully see you again soon bye for now